A recluse who inherits his father's property spends his days in peace until two women coincidentally enter his life, opening a brewing, turbulent path. On a typical day, a bank is infiltrated by muggers who complete their mission before escaping. Meanwhile, at a cemetery, Sheriff Bob Brody, a family friend, expresses his sympathy toward Travis, the recluse son of the deceased Samuel. Afterward, Bob accompanies the younger man to Judge Henry McGrath for Samuel's last will. The sheriff takes the documents to explain Travis's inheritance in the simplest terms. They discover that most of the properties and assets are left as a donation to a preacher appearing on TV, and only the farm, an esteemed coin collection, his mother's embroidery box, and his father's ring are left for him. Travis remains uninterested, seemingly not comprehending the immense wealth he lost. At the same time, Andrew Taylor, a bank employee, expressing interest in buying the coin collection or suggests depositing it in the bank. Bob calls him out on his behavior and declares that the collection has been in Travis's family's possession for a hundred years. Reassured, their heir signs the needed documents with the sheriff's assistance. As Travis starts his meal that evening, he carefully organizes the random objects on the table. He reads a religious verse from a tabletop decoration before crumpling it away in disgust. Deputy Bobby Brody, his childhood friend and the sheriff's son, comes to the hayloft where he's staying for some late night drinks. Bobby expresses his sympathy towards Samuel's passing. He reminisces about their high school days to change the somber atmosphere, especially Travis's plan to travel the world. That evening, Travis has a nightmare about hooded people standing in the graveyard and his father's iron-handed discipline, which leads to his childhood trauma. The following day, while doing his usual farm chores, a woman named Kelly steps out of a car in front of Travis's land. The beautiful woman jumps over the fence and walks toward the owner to ask how to get to Watkins. Travis explains that she's miles away from her destination, so the woman asks for accessible modes of transportation. She learns that the nearest train is in town, so she disappointedly walks away, but Travis politely invites her for lunch and offers to send her to town afterward. Kelly happily accepts the invitation, and they both head inside the house. Hours later, the clock ticking echoes in the main house, while Travis reads a book. Kelly frantically wakes up, only to discover that it's already evening. She asks Travis if he can send her to town, but the man offers to let her stay for the night, especially since he sleeps in the hayloft. Kelly notices the gun collection and boasts that her family handles it well. Then, the ranch owner offers her a room, reassuring the guests that she's safe since he stays in the hayloft. However, Kelly tells them she'll feel safer if he remains in the main house. Travis politely escorts her to her room, so the woman commends his gentlemanly nature. The following day, Travis accompanies her to the train station. He asks about the woman's aim for going to Watkins, so Kelly answers that her boyfriend is an actor there, and she wants to surprise him. Travis informs her that it has long closed down, and the woman slumps on her luggage for having nowhere to go. The man sympathizes with her and invites her to eat. Meanwhile, in a local diner, Bobby watches a woman as she speaks over the phone with her prominent British accent. Travis and Kelly arrive and are warmly welcomed by the waitress, Luti, who asks the man if he can fix their television. Bobby asks his friend about Kelly, but Travis avoids giving him specific answers. Just as the farm owner is about to return to his seat, the woman talking on the phone suddenly blocks his way. She introduces herself as Jolene, a real estate agent who's heard of the news regarding Travis's interest in selling his property. Upon hearing this, Kelly interjects in the conversation as she points out the sentimental value of the house. She adds that for someone like her with no home to return to, family property is irreplaceable, which convinces Travis to decline Jolene's offer for now. The real estate agent asks to see the property, but the owner politely emphasizes he'll think about it. Sheriff Bob enters the establishment and greets Travis. Kelly comments that it's her first time seeing a weaponless sheriff. The farm owner tells her the officer doesn't need to wield a gun in this area. Then, Bob invites Travis to the hoedown, and the guest expresses her excitement to participate. Since she's penniless and has nowhere to go, she sweetly implies hiring her to work on the ranch. The news about the muggers catches their attention as the footage plays on the TV. Suddenly, the restaurant owner, Earl, barges into the establishment with a bat while angrily yelling that he won't sell his store. Bobby immediately points a gun at him, but Sheriff Bob steps in to use democracy instead. He convinces Earl to let him go to his son to retrieve the weapon. Earl sends the deputy out, but he won't listen, so the father urges his son to leave to end the commotion. That evening, Travis catches the guest trying out his late mother's clothes, so Kelly cutely apologizes while enchanting him with her beauty. The next day, Kelly and Travis cleaned up the area by burning the twigs and grass in the furnace. The woman notices a foul smell, and they find a lifeless lamb that has fallen victim to a predator. Kelly suggests burying the animal, but Travis insists that wild dogs will dig it out again, so this way is better. Travis goes to town the following day and sits by an establishment staircase to read. 
Jolene exits the building and notices the books on the floor, so she talks about her inclination to read romantic novels and her experiences living in different countries. Travis' eyes glimmer in excitement, so Jolene negotiates to let her see his property in exchange for stories. The ranch owner reiterates he's undecided on the matter, but the real estate agent mentions that she learned from the gossip that the property is Travis's father's most prized possession. Travis becomes upset upon hearing about his father. Sensing this, Jolene adds that it's better to leave something that aggravates him. After some time, Kelly shows off her shooting skills to Travis when they visit the woods, leaving the man in awe. That evening, the woman asks for a massage from the ranch owner to enchant him more. Though fragments of his childhood trauma randomly flash on Travis's mind, having Kelly makes him forget, and soon the two share a passionate night. When morning comes, Kelly notices the scars on her lover's back. Despite lying about the source of it, the woman already understands that Samuel inflicted pain on his son, so she shares a similar experience which makes the couple closer. Afterward, Jolene arrives and asks Travis if she can see the property, but the man still declines, making her impatient. The following day, Travis and Jolene coincidentally meet in town again, and the woman asks him a favor to fix her TV in the hotel. Jolene doesn't waste time beguiling the ranch owner, but the man feels confused and uncomfortable. Despite his initial desire to leave, Jolene manipulates him to stay for a presentation as she reads some lines from a romantic novel. Soon, Travis is entirely allured by the woman, and they share the next hours intimately. When the ranch owner heads home the next morning, he sees Bobby posting wanted posters of the muggers. The deputy asks him where he's been, but Travis bids him goodbye as an answer. Bobby checks the poster and looks at his friend, laughing at his silly idea of thinking it's Travis. At the farm, Kelly impatiently looks for something in Samuel's room. Travis finds her and calls out her impudence, so Kelly charms her way out of the awkward situation. The couple shower together, and Travis spots a tattoo on the woman's back. As he probes about it, Kelly explains that her sister put it on her since she calls her Kiki. One afternoon, Travis goes home to find Jolene and Kelly drinking together. The tipsy real estate agent explains that she wants to share her success in closing a deal. The ranch owner sarcastically comments about the woman's underhanded way of getting into his property, but Kelly helps dispel the hostile atmosphere. Soon, the three of them share some drinks, and hours later, they're all intoxicated. When Kelly steps out for a while, Jolene grabs the chance to allure Travis again, so he runs to another room to escape. However, the real estate agent follows him, and the man fails to fight temptation. Moments later, Kelly sees them doing intimate acts, but instead of getting upset, the lover slowly approaches them to join the fun. The next day, Travis wakes up with only Kelly by his side. Then, she suggests letting Jolene stay with them for a while, just like a family. Afterward, he goes to the bank to withdraw some money when he suddenly hears thumps behind him while the clerk freezes in fear. In a blink of an eye, the muggers subdue all of them, collecting all the money. The transgressors notice the police near the area, so they hurriedly leave. Just as they're about to drive away, Sheriff Bob walks to the bank, seeing the muggers. Despite the officer's signal that he's unarmed, the looter still shoots him. Deputy Bobby fires at the enemies, bringing down one of them. Then, he frantically attends to his injured father while instructing the citizens to call for the other cops to block the roads. Meanwhile, the muggers hide in a barn. After the incident in town, Travis returns home and notices drops of blood on the floor. He hears some noise, so he arms himself with a revolver and stealthily follows the sound. He sees Kelly shrieking and yelling while defending herself from a stranger. Travis calls the man's attention and points the gun at him, but the stranger remains unfazed, provoking him more and threatening to shoot Kelly if he moves. The ranch owner drops his weapon and the intruder turns complacent, so Kelly punches him, followed by Travis pouncing at him. The men face each other, but the ranch owner is disadvantaged due to the enemy's blade. The intruder slashes his arm, bewildering Travis, so Kelly shoots the enemy multiple times until he falls out the window. Travis comforts his lover, and the woman finally calms down. After inspecting the vicinity, the ranch owner informs Kelly that he found another lifeless body in the car parked on his property. The woman, who is still emotional, tells Travis about her terrible experience with a neighbor who tricked her into letting him in the house to steal her innocence. Despite her efforts to ask for help from the adults, especially her father, no one believed her. They even wanted to put her in a psych ward, so her elder sister took her away to protect her from everyone. Out of pity, Travis consoles her by saying that the events will remain a secret, unaware that Kelly suddenly smiles like nothing happened. Late that night, Travis is about to dispose of the bodies in the furnace, but Jolene arrives unexpectedly. The real estate agent tells him to hurry since she thinks Kelly is lying. She heads to the main house and Travis completes his mission. He goes home after cleaning himself up and sees the women dancing together while surrounded by candles, creating a romantic atmosphere. Once again, they all share a sweet night. The following day, Jolene transfers to the main house to be with the couple while news buzz about the muggers and the sheriff's passing. 
Once alone with Travis, Jolene confesses that Kelly told her what happened last night. She praises him for doing the right thing and asks about his plan for the money. The three check it out only to find a small amount from their town bank, so Jolene concludes that the culprits hid the rest somewhere. Then she expresses her fascination with the mugger's plan as written on the map. Therefore, Jolene suggests materializing the plan, but Travis disagrees. The real estate agent taunts his pride and Kelly urges him more. Due to this, the landowner finally goes along with their whims. They dress and gear up like muggers before excitedly driving to their destination. In the bank, the ranch owner immediately threatens the people to drop on the floor so no one gets hurt, while Jolene focuses on getting the money and Kelly is on the lookout. As the muggers wrap up, a senior guard exits the break room. Upon witnessing the situation, he draws his gun and points it at Travis, while the younger man does the same to him. Despite the threats, the guard remains calm, but the transgressor gets distracted by the clock sticking. The older man readies to shoot, but Travis accidentally pulls the trigger, hitting the guard on the shoulder. The group frantically drives away, leaving the damage behind. Moments later, the three rejoice in their success, and Travis proudly retells his show of dominance toward the guard. The police siren blares as an officer pursues them, so Jolene throws the money to distract the cop, surprising her accomplices. She stresses that they looted for the satisfaction, not for the money, so Travis throws the entire bag at the cop, smashing the windshield, which leads to the crashing of the police car. The three soon arrive at the farm, and the hyped Travis initiates intimacy with his lover despite the woman's rejection, so Jolene grabs his hair and drags him away from Kelly. Late that night, Deputy Bobby arrives to interrogate Travis and the ladies, since a witness from the latest incident mentioned a female mugger. The ranch owner tells the deputy that both women work with him all day, so Bobby trusts his friend's words. The deputy suddenly zones out and confesses that he misses his late father. Travis apologizes to Kelly the next day, but the woman remains hostile towards him. Then, Bobby arrives to inform his friend that the police are tracking the muggers on his property, so he requests the ranch owner to help him scout the place. Soon, Travis accompanies Bobby in his pursuit. As he remains silent, the deputy teases him for having women in his house, which puts his friend at ease since the cop is clueless about his evil deeds. The mugger's car suddenly passes by and Bobby immediately calls back up while tailing the vehicle. Kelly blocks the deputy's way near the lake while frantically directing him to where the culprit went. Travis steps out of the vehicle and Kelly rejoices after successfully removing suspicion from them. She explains that she drove the car into the lake, but her lover slaps her for almost getting them caught. Upon returning home, he sees his father's room turned upside down. He looks for Jolene, but only finds old coin magazines and an article about Samuel's coin collection, with his name as the heir. He confronts Kelly to ask Jolene's whereabouts, but since his lover denies knowing about anything. Therefore, Travis goes to hunt the woman with his revolver. He finds her in the hayloft while opening the coin chest, so he angrily throws her to the ground now that he realizes that Jolene has planned everything. The woman fights with him with all her might, but Travis shoots her. As she lies on the floor, Kelly arrives, so the owner informs his lover of Jolene's plan. He asks the con artist why she didn't steal the first day she entered the house, but Jolene responds that she wants some thrill. Kelly attends to Jolene's wounds while Travis states his rights in taking the culprit's life, since she's on his property and his excellent reputation can make the townspeople believe in him. At the same time, Kelly draws a gun and her lover tells her there's no need for it. Meanwhile, Bobby arrives at the main house to check on his friend, but he receives a call from the other cops saying that they have captured the offender, so he rushes to leave. In the hayloft, Travis concludes that Jolene was the driver of the original group of muggers and his lover was involved, but the con artist clarifies that Kelly had no connection to those. Jolene prompts Kelly to shoot Travis, so the woman slowly points the gun at him while sobbing. Her lover pleads to put the weapon down, and Kelly shakes as her emotions overwhelm her. Seeing this, Jolene instructs her to shoot Travis as she calls her Kiki. The truth about the women being sisters devastates the ranch owner, and Kelly finally pulls the trigger. The following day, Kelly locks the main house and walks toward Jolene's car with her luggage. She asks about her sister's well-being before handing her Travis's heirloom. Jolene attaches it as an additional pendant on her trophy necklace. The sisters drive away, leaving something burning in the furnace to erase the previous night's dark events. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.